In this next part of the tutorial, we're going to look at animating a model along a um, curve or a spline. Um, and then we're going to animate that within our sequencer. There's no blueprint or anything required for this. We're just going to use the um, camera rig rail. We'll drag that into the scene and we're going to use this as our, as our curve. So we'll select our camera rig rail, we'll select our first point and we'll just drag this out. I'm just going to drag this right over here just for the sake of this demo. I don't have any particular motion in mind, just want to make sure we've got enough to make it a good demo. So I'm just going to select each point on the end here and then I can use these control points to curve this shape outwards. I can also drag this up like here. And as you can see, it starts off flat, gets steeper, and then goes flat. If you want to tweak that, you need to select the curve handle, which is pretty far away, and then just drag this down. You can see that will move up. And you can do the same with this one if you need to. Right, so with our, um, oh, one, one other thing to show you, if we select this point and then hit Alt and drag out, we can also generate another um, a, um, another point for if you want this to kind of curve around like that. Right, so with that done, we'll go to our track and we'll add our camera rig rail into here. And then we'll just select our box standard cube and we'll also add him again. So with him in place, we want to go to track, attach, and we want to select camera rig rail. Now we see him move, but obviously he's not directly on the rail. And that's because we need to come to our location and move that back to there. And we can also reset our rotation as well. And just for the sake of this, I'm just gonna shrink him down as well. Right, so if we, we can see now our object is connected to the rail. All we need to do next is go to camera rig rail in our sequencer and do current position on rail. We'll go to the start of our sequence and we'll add a key. We'll go to the end of our sequence and we'll just hit one to add another key. So we can see our cube there moving along. Now he's moving along there, but you notice when I get to here, the key vanishes. Now the reason for that is because if we just check our attach, you need to make sure that this section here, um, which is basically the attached track, starts right at the start of your animation. It's going to, when you um, spawn it in, it's going to start wherever your um, time slider thing is here. So now we can see that goes back to the start. If we wind this onto there, you can see the cube doesn't pop in until that starts. Obviously that can be really useful, but in this case, we want it to be the duration of the sequence. Now, another thing to notice is the cube isn't following the orientation of the rail. Really easy thing to fix. Just do lock orientation to rail. Now we can see that cube moved nicely along. Um, one thing to check, of course, is to go into our curves and just see, as you can see, it's starting off flat, getting steeper, and then, um, and then going flat again. So as we know, that means it's gonna move slow, then fast, and then back to slow again. I did think that would uh, zoom that in, but it doesn't seem to like it. So if we just select these two, we'll hit that button to make it linear interpolation. And now if we go back to the start of our sequence, we can see that model is flowing up there. Um, obviously, when we output this, it'll look like this, so there won't be, the rail won't actually appear um, in, our, in our output. Now, uh, one thing we might want to do, um, you might find a use for this, is parent an object to this. If, let's say we have multiple objects and we want them all to um, follow this while doing other things. So, let's select this cube here, and <laughs> this sphere, and we'll add the sphere into the scene. Um, 
Now what we can do, we can either do it like this or we can attach just straight through here. I'm going to do it through sequencer anyway just to show you how to do that. So again we add an attached track, new binding. Now if I had my name set up it would have been sensible but luckily it, know, it knows that that's linked to the camera rig so it's easy to find. Um, again you need to make sure it's come out of curves. We need to make sure that that covers the length of that sequence. So we can see that sphere is now following that. If I reset the position of the sphere, as I move it say to there, you'll see that will go with it. Now obviously you can attach um, anything you want. You can just attach through here in all honesty. If I do file save, it only seems to be um, uh, cameras when it loses the connection. If I do save all, you'll notice how it hasn't lost that. So you can just do that straight through here. Um, the other things you might want to attach include things like uh, lights. So we could have, say, a light here, put our attenuation down. We'll snap him onto that surface. And again, due to the fact this is just a tutorial, I really haven't really named anything correctly at all, but I can attach that to that sphere there. And now you'll see that light also moves with it. Okay, so we can also do things like we could add our point light into this scene. And on our point light, we could say we're gonna animate the color so we'll go to frame zero, we'll add a key there, change our light like that. We'll go to frame 15, we'll put one back in green again, zero to there, so it goes blue. And then another thing, little thing to show you, if we right click here and go to copy, we can also paste those keys in there. So you can do copy and paste. Um, in order for us to, if we wanted to loop that, we could go into our curves, select light color, and if we just hit this little button here, go to post infinity and go to cycle, you can see that will, that light will change color and this little animation will loop continuously. You can see it's even showing it um, looping now that we've added that cycle track in. So we just hit play. Very odd animation, but uh, yeah, now hopefully that shows you kind of everything you need. Um, so yeah, that's our basic introduction to animation.